Hi! In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to create a Corona application using assets and a layout created in Flash. In order to get started, head over to the download section of the SpriteLock website and download SpriteLock, the Flash extensions, and a copy of the API library code. To install the extensions, just double click on them and the Adobe Extension Manager will open up. Here you can see I've already installed the layout exporter as well as the Swift exporter. We'll be using this inside the Flash IDE in order to get our assets into Corona. Here in the Flash IDE, you can see I've set up a sample layout. Using assets from the library, I have some graphics and some vector graphics that I've created. I've laid them out on the stage into layers. So the scene is about complete. All we need to do is just create a background. And in order to do that, we're going to import our graphics into the library. So here I've imported a background PNG. We're going to need the symbol that was created by Flash during the import. But what we're going to do is we're going to move this background PNG into the ignore folder and then move the symbol into our background folder. Let's rename this background. Now let's create a layer called background and then add an instance of the background into the stage. So I'm going to lock everything else but the background and then go to position. All right. So this could be a title screen for our game. Let's go ahead and add a play button in order to get started. So here I have a play button that I've created using a text field and a round rectangle. We take a look at the timeline, it's got up and down states, and the symbols in those states are the play down and play up symbols. So let's drag this play button onto the stage, and as we can see, it's humongous. We can go ahead and resize this, and then give this button an instance name. We want to do this because we're going to access the properties of this play button in our application in order to give it some interactivity. So with that done, we're now ready to export our assets using the Flash extensions that we installed. Click on Commands, and let's export our Swifts as Sprite Sheets. So all these symbols have been exported as Swifts. We can head over to Sprite Lock now and create the Sprite Sheets for them. First thing I'm going to do is select everything that's going to be in the background and create one Sprite Sheet for that. I'm going to store the Sprite Sheet and the metadata that it's created into our application inside of the Ninja App title folder. Let's name this spreadsheet background sprite. Now let's create a sprite sheet for our button. Play, let's call it play button sprite. And finally, we want our ninja. So what we want to make sure is that our ninja is actually going to loop in its animation. Right now, the loop option is set to play once. Let's go ahead and change that to loop. Now we can pack this and export it. I'm going to call him ninja run sprite. So with our sprite sheets all set, let's go ahead and export our layout. So heading back to the Flash ID, let's click on commands and select export layout for Corona. That's going to generate our layout in the output panel. This has been copied to the clipboard, so all we have to do is paste this output into a file. So 
So here I'm going to create a new file and paste in our layout and let's save this. And we're going to call this layout layout.ruf. All right, and so we have our layout ready. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our application so far. Here in the application folder, we can see the background sprite sheets, uh, ninja sprite sheet, play button sprite sheet, and the PNGs, um, metadata and PNGs are in the folder. We have our layout.lua, and now let's open up our main.lua. So the first thing that we want to do is to be able to load in our sprite sheets and also our, our layout. In order to do that, we're going to need the sprite lock API library. So we've already downloaded that here. Let's go ahead and extract it and copy all these locked Lua files into our application here. All right, now we're good to go. So in this first line of code, we're basically requiring the lock sprite module. This will let us create a sprite factory in the next line. And all we have to do to do that is call lock sprites new factory function and then pass in the names of the sprite lock modules that were uh, exported for our sprite sheets. In the next line, what we want to do is create our layout. All we have to do is require the layout, uh, which we created. And if you, we had named that title screen layout, that's what we would put here. Then we call the create layout, create layout function on it and pass in the sprite factory. So let's go ahead and save that and take a look at what our application looks like right now. So opening up our application, we can see we have all the elements that were in Flash laid out on the screen. The play button has been sized properly, uh, and everything has been positioned properly and layered correctly as well. If we click on the play button, we can see that it toggles back and forth from an up and down state, but it's not really doing anything right now. So let's add some interactivity to this. So in the next line, what we want to do is make the ninja run. So we can access the elements inside of our layout by accessing the elements property of the layout that we created here. We access the ninja, and we can call its play function. So saving that change, we can see that the ninja is running now. Next thing that we want to do is get some feedback from this play button. So let's go ahead and uncomment this line of code, which shows that we're accessing the play button play button object inside of the uh, elements property of the layout. And then we're going to assign a function to the on tap callback handler. And that's just going to print play in the terminal. So I'm going to click on play. And as you can see in the terminal, play appears. So there you go. We created a Corona application in very few lines of code by exporting our layout and assets from Flash using SpriteLock and the SpriteLock API. Thanks for watching.